Welcome to Pitlochry. The dam is one of 95 dams constructed by the North of Scotland Hydroelectric Board during the rapid era of hydro development in Scotland during the 1950s and 1960s. Now owned and operated by SSE, Pitlochry, along with over 50 other hydropower stations, still contributes significantly to renewable electricity generation, making us the largest generator of renewables in the UK. My name is Kenny Dempster. I am Head of Engineering within SSE's Generation Engineering Centre. I am a Chartered Civil Engineer and Fellow of ICE. My role involves both the asset management of existing assets and the design and construction of new assets, including onshore wind farms, offshore wind farms, combined gas cycle turbine and energy from waste power stations. So hydro is one form of renewable generation helping reduce our overall carbon footprint. The scale of change such hydro schemes brought to not only the Highlands, but Scotland as a whole has been well documented. Perhaps something we struggle to understand in today's well-connected world. And something we perhaps also take for granted that electricity is now available at the flick of a switch and at relatively low cost. As part of the hydro development era, many people were employed in the, in the construction of the schemes which was in a period immediately following the Second World War, so brought vast amounts of employment to the Highlands of Scotland, not only locally, but with a labour force coming from all parts of the UK. Many areas of the Highlands of Scotland at that time had no electrification. They then had as a result of the hydro development era. Interesting to relate back to the original hydro development era when there were huge environmental lobbies against the construction of hydro schemes like Pitlochry on the basis it may impact onto migratory salmon. But here we are today, we have the salmon ladder and over 5,000 salmon per year migrating up the salmon ladder. We also have a fantastic new visitor centre which is attracting hundreds of thousands of people every year. It very much is a modern day visitor attraction and an environmental gain rather than a disbenefit. Perhaps of most interest to civil engineers is the current real opportunity of a major new pump storage scheme in the north of Scotland, located in the Great Glen at Corrie Glass. Perhaps we will be reliving the hydro era once again. Similarly, civil and structural engineers play a major part in all forms of power generation. Offshore wind farms are a growing element of the UK renewable infrastructure with many already planned in UK coastal waters. So as civil engineers, we are uniquely placed to influence society, not only in terms of economic benefit, but in terms of sustainable growth and a platform for future growth, be it the obvious assets of dams, tunnels, pipelines, and power station buildings, all the way through to the foundations and transmission towers that transport the power to where it's required in our homes, offices, and factories. My role ensures that the civil assets are in good condition, are available and maximise the reliability of the generation output. Often this requires a balance between cost and risk. I feel very privileged to be part of the ongoing maintenance of the hydro legacy. As a much wider engineering team, we ensure that the power stations are available for generation at all times. For the majority of civil assets, they remain in good condition which is very much a testament to the original consultants and contractors who designed and built the schemes. I have been very fortunate in my role as a civil engineer, being involved in some very rewarding and demanding work. I hope that you all take up the challenge of civil engineering and become involved in something that creates a lasting legacy, just like Hydro still is today.